Jordan Shijian, one of those YouTuber moms, was caught on camera when she was forcing her son to cry for the thumbnail of a video she was going to publish. Come here, come closer for the video, come closer, come closer, come closer, put your head, put your head right here, come closer, come closer down, put your head in here. Act like you're crying, really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, mom, I'm not just using crying. No, I know, but go like this, for the video. Go like this, put one hand up, go like this. No, go like this, put your hand like this, but let them see your mouth. Let them see your mouth. I don't know, Mom, I'm actually crying. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me, look at me. I know, look at me, look at me. Look at the camera, look at the camera. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's over, it's over. It's over. And we know that she was forcing him because he said the words, I'm really crying, which is the sole proof we need to confirm that he felt pressure into it. What's more, this is not the first time she has exposed her son's emotions on camera, as you can see in this clip from two years ago. Yes, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to cry. Oh, it's okay. Oh, sweetie, it's okay. She's gonna be okay. She's okay. Is she your favorite puppy? Yeah. She's part of the family, huh? You're sad? Yeah. Mm, sweetheart, you don't have to real do real tears. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh. You're so sweet, you're such a good brother. You're the best, you're the But beyond making this kind of people famous, I think the problem goes much farther and wider than that. This is a classic case of a narcissistic mother, there's no doubt about it, but a narcissistic mother doesn't have to be a YouTuber to make your life miserable in front of an audience. That's why in this video I'm going to use this mom example to describe the red flags that you should watch for to confirm if your mother is a narcissist and why it's sometimes so hard to spot it. In this video you will discover how narcissistic mothers love to play the victim in front of an audience, how she makes sure to keep you emotionally illiterate and how she manipulates you into triggering your emotions so she can play the victim again and repeat the vicious cycle. Welcome back my battle language buddies, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, I'm the battle language guy and it will be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. So this is where it all begins. She loves playing the victim for an audience. To inspire pity in others, she loves to be the center of attention and making you uncomfortable, upset or manipulating your emotions to give others the impression that she's a struggling mother with a difficult son or daughter. That's one of the things I really don't like about YouTube family channels. That's a bunch of narcissistic men and women that only want to attract attention by harvesting children into views. I don't have any other way to put it. We are watching a modern day version of the Truman Show over and over again and of course, those children have absolutely no say in their own exploitation. But as I mentioned, your mother doesn't have to be a YouTuber to have an audience. This kind of manipulation can happen, for example, at a family reunion. All of a sudden, she makes a scene, she bursts into tears and you are the one responsible for that. You remain confused because you're absolutely sure that you did nothing wrong. The biggest red flag is that she will change attitude almost instantly when she confirms that she can no longer get what she wants. For example, if the audience is no longer around or you don't allow yourself to fall for her charade. Sadly, children cannot understand these red flags because they simply don't have the emotional awareness to understand what's going on. And narcissistic mothers start that manipulation of their children at a very young age with the seed of guilt. Children grow up responsible not only for the happiness of their mom, but also the opposite, responsible of she not being sad or angry or upset. It's like an emotional chain between your actions and your mother's reaction. If you find yourself constantly asking yourself the question, how am I going to explain this to my mother, even for good things that happen to your life, then yes, your mother might be a narcissist. And this is how we get to the source of that problem. If you were born and grew into that toxic relationship, it's much more difficult to be aware of it because mothers play a critical role in their son's and daughter's emotional development. Narcissistic mothers gaslight their children into becoming emotionally illiterate. Imagine a small child that doesn't understand what to expect when their mother reacts in one or another way. Also, those mothers will negate your emotions saying things like, don't cry like that, it was not a big deal after all. And at the same time, you will notice that she shows the same emotional reactions but for an audience. 
For example, maybe you feel betrayed by a friend at school and you told your mother and you started to cry. If she said, don't cry, it's not a big deal, she is negating your emotional expression. I understand that most mothers and fathers do not have the emotional tools to understand that you have to dig into the root of the emotion. So not every mother that says don't cry is going to be a narcissist. But if you find her reacting the same way, for example, if she has a reunion with her friends and she starts sobbing because she felt betrayed by someone that was not present at that time, it will be an odd contradiction and another red flag. Since you're a child and don't have a clear understanding of how to react and how to read your own emotions, you'll naturally keep going back to her for reference. And that reference is going to be all mixed up. This is a big deal. This is not a big deal. But she will do the exact opposite that she preaches. And that is really confusing for a child. Like Cheyenne's case, the boy was really crying, but she insisted to cry for the camera. It's a way of saying, your emotions are not that important unless they are validated by an audience. And speaking of emotions validated by an audience, Cheyenne has a video where she was talking about breaking up with her boyfriend. And this sentence caught my attention. Ended on a very positive, happy note. And what I want to tell you guys is that Everything that you saw on camera was genuine, 100%. I really fell for him. Everything that you saw on camera was genuine, 100%. It's sad when you feel the need to clarify that your emotions are real. That's exactly how a narcissistic mother acts. She needs a constant validation of her emotions by the audience. And that's why you see all these YouTuber families fake crying in front of a camera. It's pathetic. Trying to learn emotional intelligence from a narcissistic mother is like having a dictionary that every time you open it, shuffles terms with definitions. For example, if you are going to look for the word biatch, it's going to mean something today and something else tomorrow and yet a third definition the next day. By the way, if you want to refine your observation skills, don't forget to download my 100 battle language tips in the description of this video. At the same time, she will keep a close record of your reactions to further manipulate you. Don't you dare act like that time when you did such and such and such. Or remember the time your girlfriend dumped you, who was the only one there to care for you? In that case, she's reframing your emotional turmoil to be of something of a game for her. You are the one feeling, but somehow she always ends up as the protagonist. That's another big red flag. You feel like every time you're going to talk about how you feel, she always turns the focus of the conversation to herself. She always finds a way. And if you don't follow suit and begin talking about her emotional needs, then she's going to make you feel guilty again to add to the collection of events. It's insane. She not only will keep you emotionally illiterate, but also learn to use your hot spots so she can make you react and be upset. After all, she is fully aware of all your emotional weaknesses. That's why she has an uncanny ability to trigger you. And she will make sure that she does it in front of an audience so it's much easier for her to play the victim. And then the cycle repeats itself. In the case of Shijian, there's a great example in one of her so-called apologies. We are very upset. We've been crying all day. Christian and I have been crying literally the entire day. We, it sucks because now people are going to think that our emotions from today were not genuine when they completely were. This is my question. If your son had been literally crying the whole day, how come you force him to pose for a thumbnail? It makes you even more tone deaf that you didn't care about how he felt. And what's more, you think that argument could be part of an apology? It's really sad. I got a comment here in YouTube that tells a story that is a perfect example of this behavior. This reminds me of my narcissistic mother. I was very self-conscious growing up and she would take pictures of me without my consent or knowledge and then, after a couple of months, she would send those pictures back. They were pictures of me in my worst angle. When I was over 16, I asked her to stop taking pictures of me because I didn't feel comfortable and wanted to look my best for the photos, but she did anyway, starting a massive argument. As I said earlier, a narcissistic mother will use your weak spots to trigger an argument. That wasn't the worst part of it all. Every time she would provoke me by calling me horrible names, 
hitting me and trying to trigger a reaction from me, which will be me running to another room crying and asking her to leave me alone. She would come into wherever I was, pointing a camera and recording me crying and begging her to leave me alone. She did that to make it look like I was the crazy one because once time passed by, she would show me the recording and ask me, do you remember when you were out of control? And laugh. I was never out of control, she recorded just the aftermath of my tears and not what she did. If you need help with your narcissistic mother or father, my email is open, you can reach out to me anytime. And if you found this video useful, you can help me make more of them becoming my supporter on Patreon or donating through PayPal. Both links are in the description of this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell if you don't want to miss any of my body language analysis and tips. Take care my body language buddies.